Per perception is often its most acute after, immediately after a change. Um, take putting your foot into a hot bath, the first touch, ouch. The second time you put the foot in, uh, not so bad. And um, I, 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 there may be some similar effect after circumcision. No evidence one way or another, except to say that some of these men are contacting me one, two, three years down the line from the operation. And this is our way to sort help and sympathy elsewhere. So for some men, there is a significant loss when the foreskin is removed. Uh, do visit our website, YouTube channel, Vimeo channel, and see Tim Hammond's presentation of the findings of the Global Survey of Circumcision Harm. Uh, it goes into all of this in much greater detail than I can possibly do here. What of the future? Uh, an encouraging development in recent years has been the recognition that uh, intersex children, and that's children born with atypical genitalia, uh, deserve protection as well. The UN Rapporteur, Special Rapporteur on Torture has taken this issue very seriously. And this year, Malta has banned such interventions. And obviously, people born with you know, an open bladder or something like that, that's going to be corrected. But if there's just something a bit odd with the wrong size or whatever, then that's going to be left to grow and develop. And the reason this is done is not done, the reason children are left intact is that if you assign a gender to a child, and then when they develop, they identify with the opposite gender, they have absolutely no remedy. And this is uh, common as well to mammals, in that if a boy develops intact and is unhappy with his status, then he has a remedy. If his foreskin's already been removed, he has none. I would like to see the FGM law working in a gender neutral manner. And this may not be straightforward because it would be fairer to ensure that anyone capable of giving his or her informed consent who wanted to have their genitals cut to manifest their religion or the custom of the community, their community, had the right to do so. And if the FGM Act were to apply equally to men, such a man would not be free to exercise his right to manifest his freedom of religion and custom, as the FGM Act only has an exception for mental or physical health, not a religious or cultural exemption. So it may be necessary for a new non-discriminatory piece of legislation to be devised to recognize that these freedoms are available to all people who are capable of giving informed consent. Will we eventually look back on this situation from a different viewpoint? I'm optimistic that we will. In the 10 years that I've been involved in this work, there have been a lot of changes. I can remember being sent for the first time a master's thesis to see what I thought. Um, on the subject of male circumcision. And it was written by a student, and he was advised not to write it. Needless to say, I was absolutely delighted. And there's an increasing amount of academic work being done in this area. And the significance of this work is actually quite important, because going back to the Leeds judgment with Sir James Mundy, in his judgment, he's obviously looked at the work of Christopher Price, a solicitor, and the work of Brian, a philosopher. And this year, the first political party to take male gender mutilation seriously emerged. The party is Justice for Men and Boys and Women Who Love Them. And that's a good thing. Also, the Scottish Socialists, uh, I don't know if there are any, but um, they, they, there must be, because they've expressed expressed an interest, but numbers presumably are fairly small at the moment. Anyway, I feel that more parties will eventually come on board, and I'm now also convinced that anyone taking this work on seriously is not 
committing professional suicide. I, f I feel we can be confident that uh, Charles Bradlaugh, as a courageous secularist, would have backed our campaign for the rights of children to be free to grow up without having their bodies altered to accommodate their parents' beliefs. Yes, absolutely. If there's anything I've missed, confused, 